So today I'll be talking about our use of voice-based social media platforms um, for um, disseminating reliable health information about COVID-19 amongst low-income, low-literate uh, population segments uh, in Pakistan. So the internet of today uh, is not inclusive. It's not inclusive towards uh, billions of people worldwide who are either too poor to afford internet-enabled devices, too remote to access uh, the internet, or too low literate to navigate the mostly uh, text-driven internet. So just to put this into numbers and to contextualize it, there are 2.9 billion people worldwide who are offline. And this is based on a report from, from last year. Um, there's something in the chat. OK, sorry. Um, and, and these people, so 96% of these people, so this represents 37% of the world population and 96% and of these people live in developing countries. So they are not spread proportionately across the world. This, this spread is very disproportionate. 10% of the developed world, 43% of the developing countries and 73% of the least developed countries as, as classified by ITU are, are right now offline. If we dig deeper into these numbers, we find uh, several digital divides. We find that more men than women use the internet. We also find an, an urban rural divide where, where uh, urban people are uh, twice as likely to use the internet compared to, to rural uh, uh, populations. And finally, there's the literacy divide where the internet, which is mostly text driven, is, is more suitable for people who are who can can see, can 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 and, and can read and write. So so the 2.2 billion people worldwide who are um, who are suffering from some sort of visual impairment, uh, it's not suitable for them. It's not suitable for, for low literates, oral cultures, and, and people who are speakers of, of languages that do not have a writing system. So these are uh, interestingly 47% of all world languages. So lack of um, access to information and connectivity uh, could be a major impediment to people's development. Now, what does it mean uh, to be offline at the time of the pandemic? One, it's a, it's a big challenge uh, to reach the, these offline populations with reliable and the rapidly changing up-to-date uh, information about COVID-19. So I'm talking about the times when we are in the middle of a, uh, of a wave in a particular country. So the information is changing very quickly. So when there is a gap in the information, when there's a vacuum, it's inevitably filled with, with hearsay, with, with misinformation, with rumors, with unverified information. And this has actually led to serious harm uh, to low-income, low-literate populations uh, in, in the global South where people uh, ended up resisting vaccines, physically assaulting health workers who were administering these, these vaccines and following health advice, uh, which was false, uh, and which led to hospitalizations and even deaths. So uh, this was, I think, this survey that I've, I've quoted here was conducted somewhere in the, in the, in the first wave of the pandemic that 97% of Pakistanis had uh, misconceptions about, about the coronavirus. So the biggest goal of the work which I'm describing here was to, to figure out a way to provide reliable COVID-19 related health information to people who are not online, which begs the biggest question, how do you reach them? So <laughs> your traditional means of PCs, laptops, they are not visible. Television and radio are not interactive. Smartphones are not always visible, although this is something that certainly could be discussed. Um, and textual interfaces, as we discussed, are problematic for the non-literate. However, we quickly realize that these populations speak and listen. This is how they live their lives. This is how they conduct their business. So speech is certainly a possibility. And then most of them have access to mobile phones. And these numbers are very rapidly changing. And then more and more people are, are getting access to some form of, of, a, of a cell phone or a mobile phone. So speech over simple phones uh, comes up to be uh, a viable way of reaching these populations. And this is not, not a new finding. This was realized almost two decades back. And, and over the last decade, especially, we have seen a lot of these services, which are speech-based services, voice-based services, over simple phones like IVR, interactive voice response systems, and, and spoken dialogue systems, which have emerged all over the developing world in, in several countries. So these are taking the shape of information services and social, social media platforms and crowdsourcing services. I've, I've listed a few here. This is by no means an exhaustive list. For this uh, discussion, we'll be focusing on Bang, which is a popular voice-based, uh, telephone-based social media platform in Pakistan that allows audio content creation and sharing amongst its open community of users. So the entire interaction takes place over a phone call. So a user places a missed call to a phone number. The system calls back. This is the subsidy mechanism so that the user doesn't have to pay for the call cost. Um, and then in the interaction, users can post audio messages, 
or they could play audio messages which were posted by others. And after listening to each message, they can like press keys to like or dislike or report their views on those messages. They can post audio comments and they can share the messages with others by entering their phone numbers. So in the next slide, I'll basically be showing you um, a video of a typical interaction of a user with Bang, and then we'll continue with our, our discussion. बांग को कॉल करने का शुक्रिया हम आपको जल्द ही वापस कॉल करेंगे हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम बांग की सर्विस में खुश आमदीद बांग में आप कोई भी बात रिकॉर्ड कर सकते हैं और उसे मुल्क भर के लोगों तक पहुंचा सकते हैं अपनी बांग रिकॉर्ड करने के लिए एक दबाएं दूसरों की बांगें सुनने के लिए दो दबाएं अपनी रिकॉर्ड की हुई बांगों के बारे में मालूम हासिल करने के लिए तीन दबाएं। बांग सुनने के बाद पसंद और नापसंद का वोट देना ना भूलें ज्यादा पसंद की जाने वाली बांगे पहले सुनाई जाती हैं। आज की सबसे ज्यादा पसंद की जाने वाली बांगे सुनने के लिए एक दबाएं। ताजा तरीन बांगे सुनने के लिए दो दबाए ज्यादा पसंद की जाने वाली बांगे सुनने के लिए तीन दबाए किसी मखसूस कोड नंबर की बांग सुनने के लिए चार दबाए पिछले मेन्यू में वापस जाने के लिए पांच दबाएं। किसी भी वक्त मेन्यू में जाने के लिए कोई भी बटन दबाएं। 755 वोट्स के साथ पहली बांग असलाकुम मेरा नाम महमूद हसन है मैं ई डब्ल्यू टी इस्लामाबाद में जो नबीनाओं का इदारा है उसमें जॉब करता हूँ एज ए टीचर मेरी तमाम ब्लाइंड बच्चों से ये खास है की प्लीज इस इदारे में एडमिशन कर ले क्यूँकी मैंने जिंदगी में एक ऐसा इदारा देखा है जो कि ब्लाइंड बच्चों की जिंदगी के सवरने के लिए बहुत अच्छा है यहाँ पर बच्चों को कंप्यूटर ब्रेल और दोबारा सुनने के लिए एक दबाएं, पसंद का वोट देने के लिए दो दबाएं, नापसंद का वोट देने के लिए तीन दबाएं, इस बांग को रिपोर्ट करने के लिए चार दबाएं, इस बांग के बारे में लोगों की राय सुनने के लिए पांच दबाए अगली बांग सुनने के लिए छह दबाए पिछली बांग सुनने के लिए सात दबाए ये बांग दोस्तों को भेजने के लिए आठ दबाए पिछले मेन्यू में वापस जाने के लिए नौ दबाए ये तो सुहेल के काम की बांग है जिनको भेजना चाहते हैं उनका नंबर मिलाएं और आखिर में हैश का बटन दबाएं वीक के बाद अपना नाम बोलें क्योंकि इस बांग के साथ आपका नाम भी भेजा जाएगा मुख्तार शुक्रिया ये बांग आपके दोस्त को जल्द ही भेज दी जाएगी अपनी बांग रिकॉर्ड करने के लिए एक दबाएं, दूसरों की बांगे सुनने के लिए बांग में आप जो कुछ भी रिकॉर्ड करेंगे उसको बांग इस्तेमाल करने वाला हर शख्स सुन सकता है और इसको हम बांग और दीगर सर्विसेज को बेहतर बनाने के लिए अपनी रिसर्च में भी इस्तेमाल करेंगे बर मेहरबानी अपनी जतीी मालूम जैसा कि फोन नंबर एड्रेस वगैरह देने से परहेज करें बीप के बाद अपनी बांग रिकॉर्ड करें और आखिर में हैश का बटन दबाए यार आप में से किसी को मालूम है कि छोटे बच्चे का पहला आईडी कार्ड किस दफ्तर से और कैसे बनवाते हैं बरए मेहरबानी कमेंट करके जवाब दें शुक्रिया आपकी बांग का कोड नंबर है चार आठ तीन सात ये कोड दोस्तों को बताएं और अपनी बांग को पसंद करने को कहें ज्यादा पसंद की जाने वाली बांगे पहले सुनाई जाती है और उस बांग को रिकॉर्ड करने वाले का नाम भी सुनाया जाता है इस तरह आप मशहूर भी हो सकते हैं All right so once we had decided upon the platform and the modality to reach these populations the next big question was can an IVR social platform be used to spread reliable information about covid-19 amongst underserved populations so in that regard our first and foremost goal because we were already in the middle of a wave of the pandemic was to get the word out there as soon as possible then a scientific question uh, that can we design strategies to foster engagement with and dissemination of the trusted information about covid-19 and finally there is a third point that i will not discuss in in, in today's talk which is it, it it is mentioned in our paper but it's not a main point of focus is to prevent the spread of misinformation we had mechanisms on our platform to prevent the spread of misinformation so that it's not unintentionally used for that um so going back to the second point about fostering engagement with the with the content and the spread of the content we 
designed three interventions on the platform. The first one, we created a, a curated list of approved COVID-19 guidelines. Very simple, seven messages about what is coronavirus, how does it spread, um, advice for healthy people, advice for people who are already displaying symptoms, and so on and so forth. So things like that. And a new menu option was added in the first menu where the, where the user is allowed to go for either recording or listening to messages. So it was a new first option that users could choose. Um, the the second uh, intervention was to add incentives on top of Bang, and these incentives took the shape of airtime rewards. So each day we allow every user 30 minutes of subsidized Bang use. So that's that's the, 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 where they don't have to pay for the airtime. But beyond that, they can call a, a call a paid line where, where they can continue the interaction. So the, the, the rewards took the shape of that if, if the user forwards the platform to someone else, and they pick up the call, then the sender gets five additional minutes of, of interacting with Bang. We call them Bang minutes. Um, uh, if the that user, the recipient is a new user to the platform, then the sender gets 10 minutes. If the new user continues with the call for at least a minute, then the sender gets 30 minutes. And if the uh, recipient becomes a repeat user, then the sender gets a full hour of, of free use uh, with Bang. So th those were like incremental stacked incentives that we explained to the users and, 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 and implemented on the platform. Finally, the third uh, inter intervention was uh, four messages that we created uh, around making the users thinking critically about their information habits and their, their, their health practices. So things like, um, how do you assess the um, authenticity of certain information? Do you verify if it's authentic before sharing and so on and so forth? So these things were pinned to the uh, playlist for the users and they had to listen to these before moving on. So Bang was deployed, this COVID Bang was deployed in, in Pakistan on 3rd of April, uh, 2020. Uh, within six months, it had received half a million calls. Uh, people had recorded 35,000 posts. These posts were played 2.4 million times, commented on 157,000 times, and shared 130,000 times. Specifically, the seven official COVID posts were played 46,000 times by the users. About, about half of the users who listened to any user-generated post also listened to at least one official COVID post. These were commented on 1,400 times and shared 8,600 times. Similarly, for the four pinned posts, uh, they also received, as you can see on your screen, they also received a fair bit of engagement. So the result Results, finally, and some of these are also, uh, we believe, useful for mainstream social media platforms, is that compared to the users who were not exposed to the interventions, the engagement of the tweeted user groups with COVID content was significantly higher in terms of the fraction of users who engage with such content. And here engagement is defined as listening to messages, recording messages about COVID-19, liking, disliking such things, uh, and, uh, posting comments, sharing such messages with others, and so on. And, and the engagement was also high in that user group in terms of the magnitude of these interactions. <clears throat> So this is something which we believe can be used to screen for uh, recipients who are more likely to benefit from the information as you are very careful about how you use your airtime and your bandwidth at the time of, a, of an emergency. Through the thematic analysis of the contributed content, we, we found that users adapted the platform to meet their informational needs, their emotional needs, and their instrumental needs. Just quick examples for informational needs. Users took it upon themselves to start posting daily COVID updates on the platform. So some users just came every day and, and reported the, the number of uh, cases, the number of deaths, the lockdown situation in the country, and so on and so forth. They, to establish the authenticity of what they were reporting, they actually recorded footages from uh, popular uh, television news channels. So actual recordings were placed on, on Bang from, from those places. For the emotional needs, we saw the formation of support groups, support circles, community support, uh, community support circles on the, on, the, on the platform, where users came and, and helped others coping with and processing their grief at the loss of lives or, or, or livelihoods and, and so on. And, and finally, for the instrumental needs, we found examples where users were asking others to to take their grievances to, to the policymakers and, and tell them how those policies were impacting the lives of daily wage workers or, 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 or manual laborers. And the, with the incentives, airtime incentives, we saw the, the shares of official COVID posts going up three times. So they were tripled uh, in terms of shares per person per day. So I'll stop here. Thank you so much. And I'll take any questions after the session. So feel free to put them in the, in the chat as well. Thank you.